بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأحبابه إلى يوم الدين الحمد لله We're continuing to look at renewal by the book We're looking at key verses of the Quran following the thematic order of the Ihya of Imam al-Ghazali, which is this brilliant work that is a bl blueprint on how to bring our religion to life, how to bring religion into our life, how to live the religion, to be realized by the realities of religion, and how to attain spiritual realization in our lived experience of the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. We looked at knowledge and guidance. Then we looked yesterday, very importantly, at the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ of reciting the closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the final two or final three verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, which contains an affirmation of faith, a recognition of being a faithful servant of God, and what realization of faith <coughs> entails. Today, we're going to look at purification. Looking at a verse also from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 222 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where in the end of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِرِينَ Truly, Allah loves the oft-repentant, and He loves those who purify themselves completely. Right? Now, the context of the verses has to do with a matter that is more specific. But one of the marvels of the Qur'an is that the specific context does not negate the general meaning of the verses. Just as the specific circumstance of revelation does not negate the general meaning of the verses. That neither context nor circumstance negates the generality of meaning of the um, verses. Truly Allah loves the oft-repentant and He loves those who purify themselves completely. To appreciate this, we're going to begin by looking at what is repentance. Right? In the Arabic language, repentance, tawbah, is rujua. Right? It's, it's to return. Right? But it's to return with remorse, right? with recognition. When you, when you are fleeing away from what was right and you come back, this is tawbah. It's a return. But with remorse, with regret. And there's levels of return. There are levels of return. The ulama tell us that there is a return from disbelief to belief. Because you are returning to your Creator, to your Lord, after being in a state of re rejection or non-recognition. Then there is the general repentance. Right? So this is a repentance of faith. Then there's the re repentance of submission, which is returning from sin to submission, from disobedience to obedience. And then, and this is the general sense of repentance in our religion. Then there's a higher state of repentance than this, which is the repentance of spiritual excellence, of ihsan, which is to return from distance to closeness, from heedlessness to consciousness. Right? And why does one repent? The Prophet ﷺ tells us that remorse is repentance. 
the fuel behind repentance is remorse. And one of the meanings that you would do well in this month of Ramadan to reflect deeply upon, and we have many resources at, Seek, uh, at Seekers Hub online, regarding, we have a whole reader on sincere repentance. And you'll find much benefit in the guidance related to that. What are the components of sincere repentance? What is successful repentance? Um, not despairing, etc. Then what is purification? Tahara. Tahara, in, in, in its root sense, is, is either the removal of impurity or to be free of the impure. And that's, that is the root sense of tahara. It's either, it's either an act or the consequence of an act. The act is the removal of impurity or it is the resultant state which is to be free of impurity. Because they say, Al-Masdaru yadullu ala iqa'i al-fi'l aw ala al-hasil min al-fi'l. The verbal noun either indicates the, the action itself or the result of the action. And physical impurity is a devotional form, as a devotional act that points us to the need for spiritual purity. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us acts of purification, the ritual purity of wudu, the ritual bath, the ghusl. The, the, Allah's Messenger وسلم, has taught us how to rid oneself of filth, izalatul najasa, and the various ways of removing filth with water, um, with soil, etc. But all of these, which are d religious duties and a key to be able to pray, point us to the need for spiritual purity. A meaning pointed to by the Prophet ﷺ when he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-tahur shatrul iman, that purity is half of faith. In a hadith related by Imam Muslim, and it's part of a longer hadith containing a series of prophetic wisdoms which the Prophet which Imam Nawawi considered one of the central hadiths that the message of Islam revolves around. There is a wisdom behind the outward acts of purification. Right? That ritual purity helps us with presence of heart. So that in the hustle and bustle of worldly life, if we just had to go and pray, we might pray distractedly. But the physical act of washing up serves as a tangible barrier between the worldly and the sacred. Right? It's a preparation for presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the purification, the acts of purification, as we see in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, they're expiatory. Right? That the hadith of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that as one makes wudu, sins leave one's body, so much so that they leave even from under your nails. That if sins could be tucked away under your nails, they leave even from there. Right? It's a, an expiatory act. It nurtures God consciousness. Right? It nurtures mindfulness and focus. Because we pay attention to our acts of, wa of washing up. Right? It also teaches us lessons of restraint. Because we use water, but we do so without being wasteful. We are thorough, but not excessive. Okay? And, and this is an act of spiritual illumination. Imam Zarruq says that one's presence of heart in the prayer is to the extent of our presence of heart in the purification that precedes it. Okay? So this is the muqaddimah, the precursor to the prayer. So one performs it with attentiveness and in accordance with the sunnah. To look briefly at this verse, truly Allah loves the oft-repentant and He loves those who purify themselves completely. Um, 
This, of course, is referring to both the physical purification but also the spiritual purification. So just in, in brief, Imam al-Qushayri, um, whose tafsir is, is now being translated into English, and the first quarter is translated and published and available freely by the publisher online. And inshallah, there's a link to it in um, our, the video for this. It's available through the Royal Institute in Jordan um, with a capable translation. Imam al-Qushayri in his brilliant tafsir. Imam al-Qushayri was one of the imams of the spiritual path. He was also a great theologian and great scholar of Islam who died in the year 465 after the Hijrah. He's, he describes the levels of repentance and purification men, meant here. That it refers to those who repent from sins and who purify themselves from blameworthy traits of conduct and character. It also refers to those who repent from, the blame, from all that is blameworthy and who purify themselves from distractions, from ghafla, from being heedless of Allah. Another of the early Muslims said, it, it refers to those who repent with the water of seeking forgiveness. And who purify themselves with the effulgent water of feeling shame and brokenness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Others said, as related by Imam al-Qushayri, that it refers to those who repent from all their slips and stumbles on the path to Allah. And those who purify themselves from being heedless of their master. And... Repentance, the last thing that we want to mention, that repentance in our religion is not a, it's a return. So there's an elative aspect to repenting. And the Prophet ﷺ described it in a hadith that Allah rejoices at the repentance of his servant. Why? That while we return with remorse at what we did, we return with rejoicing at the mercy of Allah, at the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll close with a, beautiful, with a beautiful incident that took place by one of the great imams of Islam, Imam Junaid al-Baghdadi, one of the great imams of the Salaf, who is known as Imam al-Ta'ifatayn, the imam of both the outward Islamic sciences and the imam of the of the inward Islamic science and the science of spirituality. Um, Imam al-Junaid mentioned that al sakati wa alayhi ham. Junaid al-Baghdadi, when he was still a young man, entered into the presence of his uncle and, spirit, and his teacher, Sariya Sakati. And his uncle and teacher was concerned and worried. So Imam Junaid inquired, so his uncle said that a young man came, up, came into my presence at, from the people of Baghdad and he said, explain what is tawbah, what is repentance. And he said, and tell me what is the reality of repentance. So Sariya Sakati said that a tawbah to Allah tansa ma min ajliha and tubt says repentance is that you not forget what is it that caused you to have to repent repentance is that you not forget your sin that is true remorse which is the heart of repentance so the young man said Laysa huwa hakada. the young man said that's not what repentance is and the ma young man left so Sariya Sakati was concerned. But this is the humility of the righteous. This great Imam asked his nephew, his own student, right, that this is what happened. So Imam Junaid said, Sadaq al fata that the young man was correct, that repentance isn't not forgetting one's sins. And his uncle said, how is that? So 
Imam Junaid said, and he was a young boy, and this is his uncle, his teacher, like his, his spiritual guide. He says, إِذَا كُنْتَ فِي حَالِ الْجَفَاءِ إِذَا كُنْتُ فِي حَالِ الْجَفَاءِ فَيَنْقُلُنِي إِلَى حَالَةِ الصَّفَاءِ فَذِكْرِيَ الْجَفَاءِ عِنْدَ الصَّفَاءِ مِنَ الْجَفَاءِ He said that if I were in a state of, in, in a wrongful state, and then Allah takes me from a wrongful state to a state of purity, then my remembering the, the wrongful and impure state, when I'm, a, when I'm in a state of purity, is a wrongful and impure act. Right? That repentance is to leave the sin so completely that you don't remember it anymore. Out of gratitude. And out of rejoicing fully in the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And that is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? Who taught us to rejoice when we repent. But to rejoice in gratitude at the great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's from the state of purity. That we purify ourselves to be in a state of spiritual purity. And presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, we're going to look at, um, you know, tomorrow, bef before Taraweeh, we're going to look at some of the verses on establishing the prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the oft repentant and of those who purify themselves fully and com completely so that we are of the people of the presence of the divine.